Hi everyone, my name is Becca Buffo and I will be leading our class tonight through the landmark court case decision known as Brown versus Board of Education. This Supreme Court decision was actually a conglomeration of five different court cases that were brought up from the district courts. Let's get started. The Supreme Court of the United States chose in 1952 to hear five pending school desegregation cases collectively, what is now known as the Brown versus Board of Education decision. All of these cases discuss the unequal facilities at schools for black students, unequal educational opportunities, as well as transportation to and from school. Although the first round of arguments for this case was originally heard in December of 52, arguments continued on after the court requested new testimony in October of 53. After the passing of a justice, the court case was put on hold until May of 54. For the purpose of our course, Ethics and Law, the question I'm focusing on is, was the choice to segregate schools by race ethical? As an educator in modern times, it is a little difficult for me to understand how these arguments for segregation were upheld and taken by the courts. Negro pupils are substantially inferior to those of the Caucasian schools. Previous precedent was set by the Plessy versus Ferguson case, which stated separate but equal educational facilities are constitutionally allowed. Continuing to establish separate schools affords a common instance of the validity of segregation laws. The following are arguments for the desegregation of schools. The schools are not equal. Segregation is a violation of the 14th Amendment's Equal Protection Clause, which states, no state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States. As previously stated, all of these court cases came from the federal court side, moving from the U.S. District Courts to the U.S. Court of Appeals and finally the U.S. Supreme Court. I will now take a few moments to go through each of the court cases, what they were and how they were decided at the district level. The 1949 court case known as Briggs v. Elliott was decided in the U.S. District Court for the Eastern District of South Carolina. In this court case, black students had to walk up to 16 miles to school, while white students had busing available. This was decided that segregation is lawful by a vote of 2 to 1. In the 1950 case, Bowling v. Sharp, the District Court for the District of Columbia decided a case concerning the racial discrimination denied black students due process provided by the Fifth Amendment. According to the ruling, the Constitution prohibits segregation in public schools in the District of Columbia. This case stands apart from the other four cases because it does not talk about the 14th Amendment. The U.S. District Court for the Eastern District of Virginia heard the case Davis v. County School Board of Prince Edward County in 1951. Through this court, it was found that a two-week-long student protest came about due to lack of facilities for Black students and teachers, including no gymnasium, cafeteria, adequate class space, or teachers' restrooms. Citing previous precedent, this court case was decided that segregation is indeed legal. In 1951, the case Brown v. Board of Education of Topeka, Kansas was heard. Linda Brown, a student, was forced to attend a black school 21 blocks from her home because the closer neighborhood school was for white children only. According to the court decision, segregation in this case was legal due to the precedent set of Plessy v. Ferguson. The final case in this cohort is Gebhardt v. Belton and was decided in 1951 by the Delaware Court of Chancery. In this case, a consolidation of two cases was had in which black students were sent far out of the way to attend colored schools where facilities, educational opportunities, and proper teachers were in question. Under the decision, segregation was valid under the common insistence of the laws as currently standing. 
The Supreme Court declared that racial segregation in public schools violated the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment, effectively overturning the previous precedent set by the 1896 ruling of Plessy v. Ferguson. This decision mandated separate but equal educational facilities for students. It was found through Brown v. Board that separate but equal was inherently unequal. The decision was unanimous under the Supreme Court, with all nine justices declaring segregation unconstitutional. This ruling affected 21 states who had laws requiring or permitting segregation. The decision was declared on May 17th of 1954. I believe that this Supreme Court ruling, the decision to desegregate schools, was consequentialist because it went against the previous precedent or ruling for Plessy versus Ferguson. This decision was consequentialist because it took into consideration the rightness or the moral effects the consequences of the actions would provide by the court. Thank you for taking the time today to view my video talking about the Supreme Court decision on Brown versus Board of Education, 1954.